please welcome the one and only Joseph Gordon Levitt. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Uh, me too. I am just, I, I, I've loved you my whole life. That's how I feel about you, Drew. Honestly, it's really true. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, it's not easy. I remember saying to my daughters, um, they were in the back of the car and we were talking about someone and I said, you know, it, it's hard to grow up at all, let alone in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. I had done uh, TV movies, feature films, commercials before ET. I'd already been at it for years. Yeah. And you had two before Third Rock. That's true, yeah, because I started working when I was six, and I started Third Rock from the Sun when I was um, 13. So how did you learn boundaries? Because even as a parent now, when my kids were young and people would be like, well, you know, boundaries, and I was like, <laughs> no, I didn't have any as a kid. I oh, wasn't in a job that did. My parents didn't. My wife and I talk about boundaries a lot. That it's it's there. It's important to give lots of playroom, but it's also important that, that the boundaries don't move. We read this study. It was a really interesting thing where they they conducted this study with rats, right? <laughs> and uh, they they put a, a wall around them, and and then they. Um, had another group of rats that didn't have a wall. And the rats that didn't have a wall bunched closer together and were kind of much more nervous and didn't play as adventurously as the rats who had a wall. Because if you know where the wall is, if you know where the boundary is, then you're free to play within those boundaries. And if you don't know where the boundary is, then you're kind of uncertain the whole time and you don't know you don't know where the boundary is. The walls do make you feel safer. Mm -hmm. And I love that analogy. It will forever live with me. Thank you. Oh, good. That's I'm so, so happy. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. Well, there is a story about a casting director. Oh, yeah. And I was wondering if you'd tell it because it seems like it was a moment that may have changed your life. Yeah, it really did. This is a story about the very first audition I ever went on. It was... Um, for a Red Lobster commercial. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I had to go in and sing. And I got in there and froze. Couldn't do it. And once I had kind of finished stumbling my way through the song, the casting director looked me right in the eye and said, that was great. Thank you. And what I love about this is that he didn't have to do that. And it would have destroyed me at six years old. And I probably never would have gone on another audition again because I would have been traumatized and I wouldn't have become an actor. But because this guy took an extra couple minutes in his day to be kind, now I get to be here and doing this and talking to you. I, just, I don't know him. I don't know who it was, but I'm so grateful to that guy. I, where is he? I don't know. Help me find him. I would love to. <laughs> I know, right? If you're that man, yeah. <laughs> if you are the man who said, example of how we should all treat each other right. and change the trajectory of Joseph Gordon-Levitt's <laughs> life, making all of our lives better, please find us yeah. at <laughs> thedrewbarrymoreshow.com. Yeah. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Red Lobster commercial, <laughs> eons ago. You changed his life, and you changed all of our life for it. Thank you for sharing that story. Yeah. May we all remember it, because how we treat each other has the most tremendous effects on the rest of our lives. Which leads me directly to asking you about Steven Spielberg and working with him. Yeah. May I ask what your experience working with him was him? like? And you were about to go into directing yourself. That was the thing, yeah. I was about to direct my first feature film, Don John, when we shot Lincoln, when I got to work with him. And so, obviously, I had the opportunity to observe one of the greats. Yeah. I was just watching him like a hawk the whole time. And um, one of the things that I noticed was he didn't have a shot list. And at one point, I actually worked up the courage to say, like, <clears throat> hey, Stephen, do you, do you have a shot list? And he was like, well, no, here, let me show you. I like to just watch what you guys do first. And then I figure it out. And I'm like, you just figure it out. These Spielbergian cinematic shots that you make, he, he hasn't listed them. He hasn't storyboarded them. He can just, just kind of whip them up. He watches what the actors do. And he's like, the camera should go here. He, he can just see it. Now, um, switching gears a little bit, super pumped, the battle for Uber. I am 
Five episodes in. Oh, nice. I'm so into it. Oh, good. Oh, my God. You like it. <laughs> Tell me how you play someone so insatiable. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Travis Kalanick, who, who co-founded Uber, he, he, he made the fastest growing startup in history. There's something really admirable about that. He changed um, the world. Yeah. The question is, what was the cost? And who had to pay that cost? Because a lot of the folks, especially the drivers who are working with Uber or for Uber, the employees of Uber, they really kind of got a bad deal. And why can't we reward companies who do great things but don't have to step on people, even if they're a little bit less successful? <laughs>